Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head to Landskrona here in Skåne, in the south of Sweden. A little bit to the north of me here in Lund, and a little bit to the south of Helsingborg, which is, by the way, a very, very pretty city. And for this one, we're going to return to a brewery who I've done a number of reviews for, but it's been over a year since the last one that I made. So for this one, we're going to return to Breakusit Finn, and we're having a taste of my first beer from their Derailed series. So this one... It's called the Raspy Wheat. It comes in at 5.7% and as the name suggests, it's a wheat beer with raspberries added to it. And uh, from what I gather, the Derailed series is their, are their beers that are a little bit more kind of adventurous, a little bit more amped up, I would say. For me, most of the Brexit Finn beers are kind of... They're almost like food pairing beers. They're just meant to be sessionable and kind of complement the flavours of food almost. But from what I gather, this Derailed series is a little bit more kind of adventurous, they're kind of more punchy beers I guess you could say and uh, that, that from what I had gathered, my friend Connie Magnusson who lives in Landskrona he tells me that this one is a pretty good beer and he's never steered me wrong yet so really looking forward to trying this one and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can can do in the future from Brexit Finn. This is review number five or so from these guys and I'm sure there will be more. They do have another beer coming out in the small parties at the start of December in uh, 2018 so keep an eye out for that one. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about Brequisite Finn then their name literally translates of course to basically the nice brew house um, but the company was founded by two former students of Lund University this was Peter Lindholm and Simon Friendberry who both studied entrepreneurship together and as part of their course they had to create and plan a fictitious company and for this they decided to plan a brewery. So Zeman was an avid home brewer and he brewed beer during his time in the university halls of residence, probably in the corridor rooms. But this was, and this was where he lived, of course, with his friend Joachim Larsson, who was a guinea pig for many of their early beers. But now Joachim is the uh, the company CEO, from what I understand. But after finishing university, they found the perfect location for the brewery behind the old railway station in Landskrona. So they ordered some custom-made equipment towards the end of 2013, and they produced their first beers for sale in early 2014. And as of 2018, this year, they're brewing around 250,000 litres of beer per year. They've been expanding constantly over the next little while and they produce around what they aim to produce around 1 million litres of beer by 2021. They're going through a, a thing at the moment where they're trying to expand their shareholders. They want to have at least 500 shareholders and they have around 320 at the moment. I think they want to become like a public uh, limited company. So um, kind of interesting to see how this goes for them. So yeah, as I say, most of the beers that they've produced so far from from my perspective would be kind of food pairing sessional beers, good restaurant beers I would say, but they do have this derailed series that's a little bit more adventurous and kind of a little bit more punchy as uh, Connie put it when I was talking to him. But yeah, yeah, really interesting brewery this one. It's cool to see some fellow alumni from Lund University and um, starting up their own company in brewing. So maybe I can get up there and do a little interview with these guys at some point because I'm in Landskrona fairly often. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, certainly looking forward to this one. So let's get on to the tasting of this beer. If you want to learn a little bit more about the brewery, check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook. You can have a look at Instagram and uh, you can keep up to date with all the latest goings on. But like I say, let's get on to the tasting of this beer itself so the brewery notes can go away and we'll have a taste of this beer itself so it tells you a little bit about the beer on the side there it just says you know it's, it's uh, basically a fruit beer it's uh, basically a fruity wheat you get a little bit of a nice kind of bready wheaty note at the start then the, the raspberries come in a little bit later this one comes in at 5.7% and um, yeah, best before the 13th of the 12th, 2018. So this one, yeah, when I'm drinking this, it'll be like about a month or two old in the bottle, I would think. But yeah, there is the Brukasit Finn bottle cap on this one. This is the same as they use for their other beers. And the label, of course, is a little bit different compared to the regular ones. Most of the labels are these kind of brown ones. But yeah, there you can see right in here, if I turn it to the side a little bit, there is the Brukasit Finn 
symbol there. Yeah, pretty cool. But yeah, let's get this guy out then and we'll get on with the tasting. 5.7% raspberry wheat beer and um, yeah, not much more to say about it so let's get it out. So yeah, as you can see with this one, nice little bit of smoke on the opening and this one is definitely a little bit more pink. Um, but yeah, nicely presented beer. So yeah, as you can see with this one, it's poured a nice bright kind of uh, pink colour. There's a solid, um, I would say, there's a solid finger of a frothy, slightly pinky fawn coloured head. And there's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. A few little ones heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall, looks pretty nice and pretty much what you would expect from any beer that has some, uh, some raspberries in it. So yeah, let's have a look at the aroma then and see how we get on. If I put my fingers behind the glass there, of course, you can see this beer is quite hazy actually. So let's have a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on with this one. So yeah, nice bit of that bready wheaty note coming out of the beer. Yeah, nice sort of wheaty kind of bready aromas coming out of there. It's almost, it does smell just really like white bread to be honest. It reminds me a little bit of some of the German kind of white bready things. A little bit of hoppiness in there, some sort of grassy floral notes as well. Maybe a little tiny bit of that almost sweet earthiness. I do wonder if they'll have used a little bit of a German noble hop in this beer. I would be interested to know. But yeah, lovely juicy raspberry notes of course. You can pick up a little bit of the tartness from the raspberries. But yeah, lovely juicy um, fruity raspberries. There's almost a little bit of a kind of candied red fruit coming out of this one as well. It almost reminds me a little bit of the... Uh, the Haribo Star Mix in this one, it really is. It's it's a nice kind of juicy sweet beer this and you've got a little bit of a you definitely have a little bit of a um, how do you say it's almost got a little bit of a kind of white um, bready note to it as well which is interesting it's, it's really interesting, I don't know what's going on outside, Vasilis is doing something crazy crazy Greek person but yeah, with this one um, yeah, it's really interesting just how that all goes together. I like, it, it's almost, it's juicy and sweet. It's got a little bit of that smooth, white, kind of wheaty, bready note to it. It kind of has everything you would expect of a raspberry wheat beer, to be quite honest. I like how everything goes together in this one. So as I always say, take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. This one really is um, it's quite interesting, so very curious to see how it tastes. But let's have a taste of this one then. So this one is the Raspy Wheat, one of the derailed series beers from Breakerset Finn up in Landskrona here in Skåne in the south of Sweden. Let's get stuck into this one. Slange, skull. Yeah, that's a nice beer actually, I like what this one's doing. Yeah, so with this one, I would say it is kind of pretty much as you would expect. So for me, you've got this nice kind of white bready quality that just blankets the middle of your palate there was right across the uh, the middle of your tongue. There's a nice little bit of a kind of pale malty quality to it. On top of that, you start to get a little bit of the slightly thicker, doughy, wheaty, bready notes out of the beer. Yeah, definitely a nice little bit of that doughy, wheaty kind of thing sitting on there. It's almost a little bit sweet in the middle of the palate as well. I do wonder, it's almost got a little touch of a kind of biscuity flavour or cookie-ish flavour right in the middle of the tongue. Uh, on the hoppy side of things, back corners of the palate for me, there's a little touch of earthiness there. I do wonder if there's a little bit of noble hop in here. It does have a little bit of that kind of German noble hoppy quality. As you come further forward on the side of your palate, it smooths out a little bit. You've got a little bit of a kind of floral aromaticity on the front corners of the tongue. Then around the very front curve of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of a kind of um, grassy quality to the beer as well, which is nice. And then the, the raspberry flavours are coming out around the, the front edge of your tongue. It's almost got just a little bit of a sour quality to it, this beer, which is nice.
But yeah, I like how everything goes together in this one. This beer is a little bit more about how all the fla the different flavours kind of combine together. I like how everything goes together in this one. The beer just slots together um, really quite nicely. So for me, the raspberry flavours, as I say, when you add fruit to the beer, it always comes out around the front edge of your tongue and it just suppresses a little bit of the IBUs there. And then when you go behind the front curve of the palate, you've got a little bit of a, a kind of um, juicy... You've got a little bit of that kind of oily bubble where those fruity esters come out from the hops. For me, there's a little bit of a kind of candied red fruit sort of thing in this. A little bit like those... As, as I say, I use this descriptor quite a lot. But it really reminds me of some of the heart-shaped sweets you get in the uh, the Haribo Star Mix. It's, I like how everything goes together in this one. Yeah. I would stick with that description. You've got a little bit of the sharper raspberries there. And you've got some of the kind of candied um, red fruity flavours too, which is um, which is quite nice. Everything sort of goes together in this one. To be honest, there's nothing in terms of the, the flavour profile of this beer that's overly surprising, but it's one of these ones, again, that's just well brewed. You know, you taste this beer and you think, yeah, this is a really kind of well done beer, this one. So I'm really looking forward to see what else comes out of this... Um, this derailed series that they do. This one, as I say, is a little bit more adventurous than some of their other beers. And I'm not surprised that this one's good because I remember they had um, a beer, a wheat beer that I tried that was a little bit more hoppy. It was almost like an American style wheat beer. And that was the last one I reviewed from these guys. And to me, their other beers were, you know, the, the more food pairingy beers that they have were, were decent enough. But that was a step above it. And, you know, I'm, I'm not surprised with this because they showed with that beer that they can really do a wheat beer um, nicely. And for me, Again, they've done a good job of this, so thumbs up to uh, to break is it fin for this one. I like how this beer kind of comes across. And for me, as a raspberry wheat beer, it's not. It's got that lovely smooth smoothness to it, and then so on top, it's got a little bit of a slightly different um, juicy fruity quality as well. So I like how everything goes together in this one. Have a go at this beer for yourself and just see what you think in terms of the mouth feel. Mid-bodied beer, carbonation smooth, a little bit of an oily mouthfeel, a little bit slightly wetter as well. Um, nice little bit of hoppy bitterness to it, but not too much. I mean, at most, I would say around, you know, 20, 30 IBUs, something like that. There's a little bit of tartness from the raspberries as well. Lovely smoothness and slight sweetness from the malt base, like I said, and just a little bit of um, juicy fruit quality from the, the hoppy esters in this one. But you've got a little touch of that sourness around the edge of the tongue. As I say, that's what you always get when you add fruit to the beer. It just suppresses a little bit of the IBUs. But overall, um, a really, really nice beer. And I do look forward to seeing how this derailed series uh, goes for uh, for Breakers at Finn. So yeah, glad I got to try this one. It's a little bit of a shame that it's taken me so long to review this beer. But none, pardon me, nonetheless, I hope you guys have enjoyed my take on this one. So yeah, let's leave it at that. So yeah, this one was the Raspy Wheat, part of the derailed series from Breakers at Finn in uh, Landskrona here in Skåne in the south of Sweden. Really nice beer this one. Nothing that you wouldn't expect in terms of flavour profile but just very very well brewed. I think that's a good way to sum this one up. So once again thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time please like, subscribe, share all the usual YouTube stuff. Check out my social media. Have a go at some of these Breakers at Finn beers and I will catch you guys very soon with some more. This is the Raspy Wheat from the Derailed series at Breakers at Finn in Landskrona here in Skåne in the south of Sweden. Until the next time, stand just now and I'll catch you guys later. Skål.